And the big story that we are tracking very closely here since yesterday is where a day after the shocking murder of a female student on a college campus in Greater Noida, post-mortem report will be made public today. Remember, the college student murdered his female friend outside the dining hall of the college, after which he ran to the hostel where he shot himself dead inside his room. Cops are also figuring out how he was able to smuggle a gun inside his hostel room. Meanwhile, a video has emerged of the boy from a few days before, where he claims that the girl cheated on him and was harassing him. He also claims he was a cancer patient. Meanwhile, Mirror Now's Eela spoke exclusively to Raja Natrajan, the executive director of Shiv Nagar University. Listen in to what the university has to say. Saddening is when you have lost two of your students. But here I would also caution you have so much security. But how could a student can get access and also shot his friend in day broad light in this campus? Uh, thank you. Uh, for saying that the security systems, you found it to be pretty tight and strong. Uh, so as far as uh, how a gun could enter the campus, uh, we are equally taken aback and therefore we are also investigating the matter. Uh, the police is also investigating the matter about the gun coming into a campus and how it uh, got into the hands of a, a student. Uh, and therefore we are cooperating in that investigation and trying to ascertain how this could happen. That's how we are looking at it right now. How the incident happened and what was the first reaction of administration? Till now, what all you have provided to the police, what help you have provided to the parents? First of all, uh, and in mourning for the loss of two students, we are a residential campus. So the students are equally our children as much as the parents. So they stay here in the campus and live for four years and they are our children. So loss of uh, two students is immensely tragic. So we are uh, number one uh, cooperating with the police and providing all assistance that we can in terms of uh, ascertaining what happened, how it happened and uh, all of that stuff. Uh, and we are very uh, empathetic with the parents who have uh, lost their child. Uh, we are trying to support them in every little way. Uh, the boy comes from uh, Amroha and the girl is from Kanpur. Uh, first of all, the most important thing is the parents are looking for closure in terms of the loss of their uh, you know, son and daughter. So it is our job, first of all, to ensure that uh, uh, they find closure, uh, they are able to do the last rites because uh, since it's an uh, unnatural death case, the police are uh, Investigating the post-mortem has to happen. The bodies have to be taken to the village and Kanpur, uh, and the last rites have to be performed so that uh, they first, first of all, find closure in their minds. Uh, and then the jaunt, in any case, uh, the technicalities will still happen, and we will find a closure. Uh, we have, as you rightly said, stringent uh, security measures. We have enhanced the security measures also to ensure that uh, all in the campus. Because we are a residential campus, we have students, faculty, uh, everyone in this place. So their current security, safety is the highest uh, priority for us. Sir, there are more than 3,000 students yes. in your campus. Yes. So sir, this student was living in a hostel as well. He might be living with his friends and uh, he is also a very old student. Was he showing any kind of signs? Was his behavior change over uh, time? Mm -hmm. Not really. I, I think the campus is a very lively place. Uh, uh, the 3,500 students are all, uh, friends and uh, they support each other in uh, many ways. Uh, both the children were uh, third year students and they were very bright in their studies, uh, participating in various activities uh, and nothing in their demeanor or any behavior told us that uh, you know there is anything amiss. So there was no really any clue to believe that something was wrong, something that we should get in and because uh, these are all young adults, they know how to conduct their life and uh, uh, that's what a residential campus is all about. Yeah, sir. sir, this boy has shot a video before killing himself and said that he was going through last year's stage of cancer. So was the administration aware about the fact? Not at all. In fact, after seeing the video, we became aware. Um, and how did he find out that he has, where did he go, etc. Because we have a medical counseling system, we have an uh, infirmary in the uh, campus and where we detect something that has to go to a hospital for investigation, we assist the students. We have even
students for the students. We take care of them. But there has been nothing on the records to say that he came and told or we knew of it. No. Through the video, we became aware. And joining me right now is my colleague Ila, who got that uh, that exclusive conversation over there with the administration of uh, Shiv Nadar. Well, Ila, one thing isn't clear as to how did the boy manage to get the ammunition, the gun, inside the hostel? Was there no checks available over there? And why did the people around him not be aware about it? Well, absolutely, Samya, and this was the question I asked to the administration as well, that how, despite so many layers of security and security staff, they were not able to track down this gun and how the boy who was just a student of a third year was able to access gun, put uh, it in his hostel and shot a girl in broad daylight and to inside the campus only uh, near his, the dining area they were seen talking to each other and suddenly this boy shot the girl ran to the hostel and in the hostel he shot 25 minute long video and still the administration was not able to figure out to catch him or to stop him from shooting himself as well and we also got to know about his health condition as well uh, that he in his video has claimed that he was going through last stage of cancer but the administration said that they are not aware about this fact as well which also come as a shock because we all have been to universities we all have been to schools and colleges and first thing first they all uh, take our medical records as well now the college administration where right now I'm standing you can see they are saying that they have formulated a committee to look over over it and uh, to investigate how the gun got inside the campus and they are saying that they are also in contact with other parents as well because other parents are concerned about the safety and security of their students inside the campus only and uh, this is not just about one university which is in greater noida but question is about the safety and security for all students right now living away from their home as arjun was living from uh, away from uh, his home and as per we got the information he was a bright student he doesn't come from a very well off family he he was a good student and he also used to talk very politely with others but how could a student can get access to a gun and shoot someone inside a campus in broad daylight that is the bigger question meanwhile police has said that they have sent the bodies of both the student for post-mortem their families were being informed they have also come from the hometowns to greater noida and their families going through a really hard time as well as the students who are here are really shocked about this incident but the bigger question is as you mentioned correctly how we could get the hold of a gun in a city like uh, greater noida which is near to national capital delhi and nobody did got the information about it this is the biggest question we are also asking and police is also trying to track down how Arjun was able to get the gun from where he got the gun and how was he able to get the gun inside the campus. Over to you. Well, uh, thank you, Ila, for getting us all those uh, details. We shall leave it at that for the moment. And to discuss this further, I'm joined by our esteemed panel of guests, Dr. H. Chaturvedi, who is a director of uh, BeamTech. I'm also joined by uh, Dr. Vikram, who is uh, the former DGP from uh, UP. He's also the Chancellor for the Noida International University. Uh, good afternoon to both of you and thank you for taking our time and joining us here at Mirror Now, sir. Uh, my first question would, of course, go across to you, Dr. Vikram Singh. What exactly do we know about the securities or the safety checks that are essentially put at any university or educational institute to ensure that there are no arms or weapons that are easily available for students inside the hostel? And how are they managing to take this inside? Were there no metal detectors? Were there no physical frisking? Were there no checking of uh, belongings? That is the larger question that everybody is asking right now. Good afternoon, Samia, and esteemed Dr. Chaturvedi, sir. Of course, no, there's sir. multi tier security, <clears throat> and the security would include not only the CCTV metal detectors, the open security, and the obtrusive, unobtrusive security. 
and also as they say in Hindi, decent uh, student welfare counselors, the class coordinators have what is known as they say, chehra parlena, what is going on behind the eyeballs of the students. Not only what they are eating, but what is eating them. And that is why they have to be experienced and seasoned security person and teachers. What is going there? What volcano is about to erupt in your mind? Yes, there should be metal detectors getting a pistol, procuring it and smuggling it into the hostel, using it and shooting a video is just not acceptable. Whatever security measures we may put, yes, as Mr. Natarajan had mentioned, they are, all of these students are our children and we do need to put the best foot forward so to ensure that they are secure. Obviously, we can't get back Arjun and Sneha and the police are doing their job. But the security is not only just physical checking, but also the checking and also assessment of the mental fragility of the child. And that is where the problem arises. We were lucky that we did not have these conflicts in my time. But now the children are put to so much of academic pressure, turmoils, and I'm told that the deceased Arjun was suffering from cancer. That again must have added to his problem and the mental fragility and the rest. What has happened is a tragedy of the worst kind. But I do hope, Samia, that there are important lessons to be drawn, that the frisking has to be taken to a different level and anything that is unacceptable. I will certainly be aware and privy that if my student is going and procuring a pistol, I have a right to know and I have a business to know. If he's smuggling the pistol inside the hostel, I have a business to know and also neutralize the smuggling of that pistol. And if he has the propensity to use it, I have to come down like a ton of bricks. Absolutely, Mr. Uh, Dr. Vikram Singh, you're putting it out very succinctly, but I'm also going to ask Dr. H. Chaturvedi, uh, you know, when Mr. Singh is talking about there has to be mental checks as well, just saying that there are counsellors available for the students to avail their services, that isn't really cutting ice anymore. There has to be something more as far as more exercise or regulations that have to be in place to ensure that there has to be regular checks from time to time to ensure that the mental health of the students are also fit enough to be a part of the university. Yes, I do agree that uh, uh, this single event is giving us a warning that our universities and our college campuses are not safe. And uh, in future, we may face situations which is sometimes uh, reported from the campuses of uh, North America, where there is a gun culture, and even in schools, there are shooting instances. Siv Nadar University is one of the excellent, eminent university of our country. It is not having lakhs of students. It is having only 3,000 students. They are quality conscious university declared Institute of Eminence by Government of India. And it's a residential campus where faculty and students are living. So it is surprising that uh, such a violent behavior in the mind of a male student could not be noticed by the fellow students, by teachers, and also by the counselors. In the residential campus, each student is observing the fellow students. Each teacher is having a direct connect with the students taught by him or her. So I think that uh, it is giving us a very big signal that uh, we have to think about the mental health and well-being of our young generation. Arjun, being a good student, but he was so violent, so aggressive, that he murdered his uh, former girlfriend. And uh, this is uh, showing that there is a deep disconnect uh, among uh, uh, between the teachers and students. And it, if it is possible in a residential campus, it, it will take serious proportion, monstrous proportion in those campuses where lakhs of students are living, but they are not uh, residential campuses. And it is difficult to uh, notice anything wrong is happening with one particular student. So I would like to say that we have to find out innovative methods to find out uh, the stances of aggressive behavior. We have to have a mental health policy, although the regulatory bodies are asking colleges and universities to have counselors. Right. But simply having two, three counselors will not solve the problem. I think we have to provide many spaces 
and many channels where the sickness can be reported, where the treatment can be obtained. I would like to Absolutely. give example of online uh, counseling for mental health. We have taken help from a startup from Bangalore, which is called Your Dose. And BIMTEC has engaged them since 2012. And uh, they are providing mental health counseling to our students who are allowed to log in on their portal. But of course, they, sir, they may be providing mental doctors. health counseling, but it's very important for the teachers and the faculty members to have a process of dialogue with their respective students to ensure that if there is a need for any student that they feel should be attending counseling classes, that they can direct him to the right forum. I'll have to end this conversation over here. Thank you, Dr. H. Chaturvedi and Dr. Vikram Singh for joining us here and yes. taking our time and sharing your views on this very important subject that you were discussing. Thank you.